Space travel has to be where humanity's future lays. We keep reproducing at an alarming rate and if we want to break free of the finite resources of this planet, we need more space. We need to head for the stars. This channel covers many conspiracies including alien life and UFOs. These ships being reported have technologies which allow them to cover the vast distances of interstellar travel but we do not. So with this being said, is there a way we could work around the time and distance problem? Well there could be and we see it used in many books and movies. Stasis, cryosleep and hibernation. It gets a new name each time it's used. This technology allowing space travelers to sleep or basically be frozen in time while a massive journey takes place. Let's forget some of the other problems like time still moving for those outside of the pod etc and just look at this as a possibility. Are we on the edge of having the ability to freeze time for an individual? Welcome to IF, videos on mystery and history. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss a video again. Let's start with stasis. Stasis is a method of stopping physical changes in a substance, this including living things. It could be a means for us to help stop sickness progressing or allow us to survive an ultra long space mission. The American artist Delmore Swartz once stated, time is the fire in which we consume. We are conceived, we live and we bite the dust. However, all through history we have been captivated with the idea of evading time. From such stories as Sleeping Beauty to stasis fields and suspended sleeping heavily featured in sci-fi media. The roots of this idea can be tied to the results of a timekeeping experiment. In 1971, Joseph Haffel and Richard Keating put four nuclear clocks on planes. These aircraft flew twice around the globe, first eastbound and then westbound. There were differences in the time shown on these clocks and the end of the experiment, this opening the door to the manipulation of time. As Haffel and Keating test demonstrated, the rate at which time passes is situational. If you are traveling at super relativistic speeds which are close to the speed of light or near a black hole and somehow not being destroyed by it, the amount of time you will experience is going to be less than the amount of time for someone else. Those who travel in space like the astronauts of the space station encounter time dilation, aging a tad slower than individuals on earth. They are moving quickly so they are affected by spatial relativity but they are also further from the earth so they get less gravitational effects. Be that as it may, this time dilation is only a moment or two, a few seconds at most. If the goal is to acquire a huge expansion of this effect, massive gravitational fields or close to light speed travel would be required. Both are totally impossible at present. The British comedy Red Dwarf had a great hypothesis on stasis fields. Like x-ray beams can't go through lead, time can't enter a stasis field. Thus, in spite of the fact that you exist, you never again exist in time and for your time itself does not exist. From Red Dwarf, one type of space phenomena, to another, black holes. To cause time widening, you would require a massive gravitational field like those produced by black holes. The downside of this being that black holes would rip anything near or entering them to shreds. So we need another option. DARPA is creating biostasis technologies, providing us with a means to slow the body right down to the atomic level. The biostasis is currently being developed for medical purposes. They are attempting to extend the golden hour this is the 60 minutes when an injured person has the biggest chance of survival if they reach a medical facility. Another use would be prolonging the viability of blood stores and organic medical materials. 
Dr. Tristian McClure Begley of DARPA's Biological Technologies Office explains how this technology slows the speed of a living thing down, saying he had originally conceived the program to explore a diverse array of potential technologies, ranging from molecular pharmacology and biocompatible materials chemistry and engineered intrinsically disordered proteins. This technology does not seem suitable to the needs of long distance space travel. Maybe we should look elsewhere. Mother Nature may be able to help. There are a few animals, for example, wood frogs, which have the ability known as cryptobiosis. This is a form of hibernation when every single metabolic process ceases, yet somehow they stay alive. This adaptation enabling them to survive being frozen solid. Other creatures also hibernate for long periods. Bears can enter hibernation when their metabolism slows considerably, allowing them to sleep for months. New technologies working from these examples have been developed, such as therapeutic hypothermia. This is when a person is in a low metabolic state for a couple of days by cooling the body. This is being used to help those that have suffered heart attacks or brain injuries, giving them recovery time. This idea has been picked up by NASA. They have taken this idea and are developing torpor. The process for torpor works in two key phases. The initial cooling period, which involves sedation, and the subsequent warming or waking period. In a clinical setting, you are under pretty heavy sedation and using an invasive cooling system, but we are looking at new pharmaceuticals that can minimize the amount of sedation required to enter this state and simplifying this cooling process, explains John Bradford, President and Chief Operating Officer of Spaceworks. Placing a person in a cryogenic state is a lot more complex than freezing them like a popsicle. Demonstrations have shown that dropping our body temperature by as little as 5 degrees centigrade slows the metabolism and the chemical reactions happening inside our bodies happen at half the normal rate. These technologies slow the metabolic rate, but how plausible is the suspended animation of science fiction? The most well-known of these cryonics, which involves freezing a body to approximately minus 190 degrees centigrade with the aim of reviving the patient later. Some animals, like the wood frog we mentioned before, can stop this metabolic process, yet remain alive. However, placing someone in a cryogenic state is a lot more complicated than simply freezing them. We wash out the blood and then infuse the patient with cryoprotective solutions, explains Victoria Stevens of Cryonics UK. Rather than turning them into a solid state, it turns them into a glass state, thereby reducing ice crystal damage. Cryonics is only used after the heart has stopped beating. The idea is that medical science will advance sufficiently in the future to allow revival and treatment. Nobody has been revived yet, as we currently do not have the technology to be able to do that, says Stevens. If we did, then we would probably would not need cryopreservation in the first place. There was a case that could give hope for this technology a woman who survived being frozen solid. In 2001, Erica Norby was caught in a blizzard and became buried in snow and ice. She entered into a hibernation-like state for approximately two hours. Doctors reviving her after she had no heartbeat and was clinically dead. While this may offer some hope that we could one day develop suspended animation, it was an isolated incident that has not yet been replicated. Do you think we will one day be able to sleep outside of time? How will that affect the people who make the choice to sleep? Waking up hundreds or thousands of years in the future would be very strange. Just look at the problems Stallone had with the seashells in Demolition Man. Would you choose to sleep away decades or do you think this technology can end up being a curse like that of Sleeping Beauty, which I mentioned at the start of the video. Let me know your thoughts 
in the comments below. If you enjoy what we do here on the channel, please hit that subscribe button, like and share. You can find us across social media by searching We Are If. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.